Good afternoon, Lagos. Good afternoon, Nigeria. You're watching Plus TV Africa, and the program is Sports Business with Orufo Ezaga. Today we have another bumper uh, package for you guys. We're going to be talking about sports. We're going to be talking about media and the, the power of media, the, the influence of media in the promotion of sports business in any country. The media is arguably the most critical stakeholder in sports business anywhere in the world. For centuries, the media has helped to shape public opinion about sports and to entrench it as an integral part of progressive civilizations. The media influences fans, sponsors, partners, and others in the sports ecosystem, and many times can determine which clubs, sports, fans should invest their emotions and resources in. Builders of sports properties around the world, like sports leagues and competitions, and even leaders of federations and, and, um, and governments, usually turn to the media to, to help in informing their publics and also to engage them with compelling stories. Now, in Nigeria, the domestic sports industry has virtually collapsed since the turn of the century. And this is in part because of our media turning its focus on promoting foreign sports properties to us while marginalizing domestic sports. Chief among the most reported sports properties um, that we have in Nigeria today are the English Premier League, the UEFA Champions League, the American NBA, and lately, American football and its Super Bowl finale. This has had serious economic consequences. Over the last three decades, Nigerians have invested over a billion dollars in foreign sports properties through broadcast rights, tourism, merchandising, and even sponsorships. As of today, even with the critical economic situation in the country. Nigerians still spend over $100 million on the EPL and other European and American sports properties annually. But the tide seems to be turning. A generation of younger Nigerian journalists and content creators, perhaps influenced by the successes they have seen in our music, movies, and tech industries, are beginning to give voice and timber to Nigerian sports. Most of this lot can be found online and they talk a lot about the, the domestic scene. And they account for why the Nigerian Premier Football League and its clubs are becoming a regular part of our local interactions. There's still some distance to travel, but we can see that there is progress. Even foreign investors are getting in on the act. For the first time in almost six years, the MPFL has a TV broadcast partner. And it also has a streaming partner. Fillers show that there is even more cherry news on the horizon. Today, I will be talking to two of those foreign investors, right? Joining us from London in, a, in, in, a, in due course will be Ed Simons. He's the president of sports, of Propel Sports Africa, the streaming partners of the league. While in the studio with me is Asha Alon. Asha is the managing director of Africa Sport Network. And his country, the company, sorry, has the sub-licensing rights to the, to the MPFL, to, to beam the MPFL to audiences outside Nigeria. Hello, Asha. How are you? I'm doing very well, Rufo. Thanks for inviting. That's great to hear. You're doing very well because of the MPFL, or you're doing very well because of all of your business? Doing very well, first of all, because our concept is getting traction, because people uh, like what we are offering, okay. because uh, we see the number of our subscribers and audi audience rising every day. And that's a very strong push to our um, planning. And we understand that people adore what we are doing and they like the concept that we are presenting local sports and not just imported sport and by that uh, this is our uniqueness and this is our advantage on the market and we see the clients and the subscribers uh, adoring that okay um 
let me look at the MPFL has recorded some some progress in 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 the past year. You know, for the, for the last two seasons, there's been some sort of stability in the league. Yeah, and in this last year, this particular season, there's been um, more interest, so to speak. Yeah, um, but still, most much of this has come from the online space where you have the younger generation talking about you know Nigerian sports. The mainstream media is still focused largely on what's going on uh, outside our shores. How does Africa sport, where do you fit in this? Do you, do you, what's your content like? Is it going to be uh, more local than foreign or it's going to be an even split or, you know, what's your? So first of all, when we are speaking about uh, the young generation, mm. We need to understand that 50% of the of all the population in Nigeria and generally in Africa are under 25. So when we are speaking young generation, this is actually the absolute majority. Mm. And uh, the next step is to offer them the content where they like it and where they want to consume it. And that's in most cases in the phone that is sitting in their hand. And in terms of content, we want to and that's what we are doing, we, want, we are focusing on African content and we are focusing on mediatizing the local sports, whether it's football, basketball, chess, uh, uh, swimming, any, any sport that, that happens around and bringing additional international sports, of course, we can't ignore it as an added value. But the highlight of our activity is to mediatize the local sports, which wasn't done before and was completely abandoned before we arrived a year ago. Okay, so you've been here for just one year. So Africa Sport Network has been launched exactly almost a year ago. So 5th okay. of May, 2023. All right. We started from scratch. It was the first day that we went live. Uh, ever since, we already wrote more than 15,000 pages of content as articles on our website on our platform, uh, we acquired the exclusive rights of NPFL Live to broadcast it worldwide to all the African and Nigerian diaspora. Uh, we've launched those live streamings a few weeks ago. Today, as we are today, we have five live matches that are being streamed online to our subscribers uh, of Match Day 30. And uh, we are doing things that were not done here before. And we are bringing uh, not only the media to the local sports, but we are making it also affordable and not uh, uh, expensive to consume. Afsha, what are you seeing in the local space? What are you seeing in Nigerian sports that you know, most of the Nigerian media can't see? Why are you investing in local content at this time when most of the guys in, 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 the, in the media space I are still investing heavily in, in foreign content. Well, I'll not criticize my, no, my, colleague, you, my you, colleagues you in you the can't, media. Asha, but, but I, I will, can't. But I, I will tell you, look, yeah. when we looked several years ago about what's going on in Africa, and I live in Africa for 15 years now. Okay. So I'm, 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 more, I'm more African than, than European already. Yeah, okay. Then... We said that in Europe you have Eurosport that yeah. speaks, that was built to speak about and to mediatize the European sport. And in the US you have mostly ESPN that does the same for, for the US sport. And there was no equivalent in, in Africa. And uh, therefore we said, okay, here is a business opportunity. Uh, being in Africa and living in Africa and understanding what uh, the subscriber wants or what the audience likes and expecting to have this is where we entered to this niche that no one else was before us okay and for me as a managing director of africa sport network for it's a business opportunity but it's also a passion it's a passion to bring a solution that wasn't there before it's a solution that allows the small kids on the street to consume local content that will bring them eventually to the stadium, that will bring them to like the local uh, players before they reach Europe, before they become mega stars in Europe, before they are uh, uh, exiting and making the league of Nigeria and other countries later on in Africa 
interesting but also as a financial booster to the country, as a financial booster to the economy by driving investors, driving sponsors and everything else. Okay, so um, based on the numbers that you have seen, you know, in the one year that you have operated, what would you say is the picture like? You know, is, is, is there more attention coming to the league? Is there more interest? Do you have sponsors now? Do you have, um, in, you know, encouraging subscription numbers? What, what would you say, how would you, how would you, um, how do I appraise your one year um, in the league so far? So I'll give you, maybe I'll give you my board, uh, my board report. Yeah. But basically, uh, when we launched, we saw that the ma absolute majority of the visitors that we had on our platform came to watch or read mostly about EPL, okay, okay? In, in English Premier League. Okay. And one year later, we have currently more than one million unique users subscribers uh, or audi audience in our network, okay? That's unprecedented. In one year to have one million uh, users for a company that is not investing billions of dollars uh, in that, but we're doing a, d a process that is very uh, um, advanced, that we're doing a process that is taking in consideration all the local audience and we are giving them something that is unique. And this is why they are coming. Most of it is free to use, and this is why the audience are coming. And by the end of the day, we are giving an added value, and we are presenting something that wasn't there before. Okay, so let's talk about the media itself and its influence when it comes to sports, right? How much of an influence is, is the media when it comes to sports appreciation, um, to fans appreciating um, um, the sports content, the, the clubs, the, the players and all of that. How influential, is it, is it the media that's the most influential or do the clubs have to sell themselves or the players have to sell themselves? First of all, it's a joint effort. Okay. The owners of the clubs, they need to do more in order to bring the uh, audience to the stadium. But that's where we enter the media. This is where we enter to the game. If the media will speak only about what's going on in the UK, US, what, uh, uh, Spain, the small kid on the street and the football fan, he will not even be aware about what's going on in the stadium that is three minutes walk from his house. Mm. And once we are meditizing it and we are saying, okay, today or tomorrow there's going to be the match of uh, 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 lobby stars against shooting stars and, and so on, and it's in the stadium next to your house, go and s watch it we will see the number of spectators in the stadium rising. And when it will rise, the owner of the club will have more income to buy more players, to have more uh, uh, elements to uh, invest in his own team. Once the team will have this traction, sponsors will come. It's extremely difficult to bring sponsors at the moment to the sport. It will come just because people like it in person, not because they see it as a financial opportunity. And we, as a media, our job is to make it a financial opportunity. So they will see the added value and it will not come just because they personally like it. And this is it. Okay. Did you hear recently that um, one of the biggest investors in Nigeria is thinking about, you know, owning a club in the NPFL, uh, well, in the league structure? Did you hear that, uh, Tony Lumelu? So... I met him once, he never told me that. Yeah. Um, I hope that he will enter, because if he will enter, and he's yeah. a very perfectionist person, he's a very, um, has a strong drive, yeah. he will bring other players. Yeah. He will bring his friends, he will bring his competitors that will say, okay, let us, let us be there as well. Okay, and this is exactly the type of players that the Nigerian, football and the Nigerian sport in general, not just the football, needs in order to drive that. Because when, if uh, uh, the owner of UBA will come, the amount of media attention that it will create around this club yeah. and around the league, it will bring 
the people to follow it. They will come, they will read, they will learn, look for the article of it. They will want to see the live match. They will come to the stadium and this will bring other sponsors, other uh, uh, financial uh, companies to join that as well and it will do wonders. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Sports Business on um, Plus TV Africa. We're going to take a one minute break and when we return, would, um, the Sports Business would return as well.